Hi, everyone. My name is Tony Karkmo, uh, president of Civil Cloud Learning Solutions and president of the DFW BIM Infrastructure User Group. And thank, him, thank you for joining us for another session of uh, Expert Elite World. And today we have a special guest, Rob Sinclair. So Rob, if you want to introduce yourself. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Tony, for having me on. I'm Rob Sinclair from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I work for civil and environmental consultants. Okay. You also go by CEC. I'm the corporate CAD design technology manager for, for our firm here, and I've been with the company for 14 years now. Okay, cool, cool. So when did you get started with, uh, the, I guess, your very first Autodesk product? Yeah, I started on uh, release 10 back in high school. Okay. So, yeah, I was uh, fortunate enough to be in a high school. We you know, had one of the first CAD labs mm -hmm. uh, in the country uh, oh, wow. back in like 1994. And our CAD lab was so sophisticated that um, Michael Baker Engineering who used to be headquartered, still is headquartered here in Pittsburgh. They would actually come in after school to use the CAD lab because it was better than the equipment they had in their offices. <laughs> what would that have? Well, I guess what were you drawing in, I guess, in high school? What did that have you do as task? Yeah, just basic stuff, you know, just um, 2D planometrics, mm -hmm. um, you know, mechanical gears and bolts mm -hmm. and nuts and yeah. all the the basics you know we did um board drafting as well yeah. uh, which is i feel very fortunate to <laughs> to kind of grow up on the board because you, you teach all the the theory behind drafting yeah. and yeah. design you know which is kind of becoming a lost art today yeah yeah that uh the, the hand draft and we we got it in military we spent our first two weeks in manual hand drafting learning how to do on the drafting board, using all the tools of different types of pencils with H1 through six pencils and templates and stuff. So yeah, we had, and then um, uh, riding on Mylar and stuff like that. So we had a good experience. So uh, I'm assuming, was that like Windows 95? I can't remember that year. Was it Windows 95? Uh, well, the, uh, that ran on DOS. Oh, yeah, um, DOS. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think R11 was the first one on Windows mm -hmm. that, that we used anyway in high school. Yeah. Um, but but the DOS version, remember the big digitizing tablets where you have the commands <laughs> yeah. off on the side yeah. and you had either a four or 16 button puck that you'd use. Yeah. And then, <laughs> yeah. 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 Good. The good old days. <laughs> yeah. I was just talking to uh, Sam Lucido last week and we were talking about the old Mylar copier. I don't know if you remember that. Oh, yeah. The printing and printing and blueprint machines yeah with the ammonia yeah, ammonia just, as the kids have it so good these days they don't want to yeah. sit there with that you had to have a room that was ventilated just to get all that stuff out of there mm -hmm. yeah it's uh it's it's times have changed so um but uh yeah so uh what do you currently do i guess you're at your job right now what's your yeah, some of yeah, your duties so yeah i'm the cad design technology manager for our firm and i, I kind of oversee all of our design softwares, our mm -hmm. drone program on the data side of things, also our LIDAR scanning. Um, I'm heavily involved in a lot of different softwares. I, I have a list, running list going and mm -hmm. involved in 80 different softwares from one Ooh. capacity or another. Definitely not an expert in all of those. Yeah. Um, you know, I would say my bread and butter is Civil 3D. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of started in Civil 3D 2005 okay. and been kind of rolling with it since. Yeah. But um, you know, I support 600 CAD users here. We're a 1,200 person firm and, you know, do all the training, uh, implementation, deployments, you know, the whole nine yards. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Um, so um, are there any other Autodesk product? I mean, non-Autodesk products y'all use other than just Autodesk? Um, we have uh, some Bentley users on okay. five, thankfully, and I try to stay <laughs> far away from them. I, I, Try to stick uh, in my wheelhouse, which is the Autodesk product. Yeah. Um, uh, I work a lot with Pix4D, which is the drone okay. photogrammetry processing software. And then we use uh, some of the Leica products for okay. LiDAR scanning processing. Yep. I've, I've used Pix4D once. I actually had a client in Hawaii wanted me to use it, so I started using it. And this is an interesting story. Uh, he called me up one day. I don't remember if you remember when the, one of the volcanoes exploded in Hawaii like four years ago. Um, and I was on call with him when it happened and then the phone went dead. And I'm like, oh, what wow. happened? What happened? And he, he called me an hour later. He was, yeah, we, you know, it was shaking the building and I was scared. <laughs> That's why I hung up. And he goes, yeah, and it, it was a hundred miles away. 
and he felt it. He was shaking, the, shaking the, the building and stuff. But I always thought it was an interesting story that you're you're in a Zoom call live, and all of a sudden you see the sh- the camera shaking, wow. and and it was uh, the volcano exploding in Hawaii, one of those volcanoes so erupting. Dang. So, uh, and then I turn on the news, and I'm like, I call him back the next day, make sure he was okay. Because oh no, it's, it's it's way on the other side of the island. You know, we're good. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, that's scary for sure. Oh yeah, I was like I think about it, you're straining on the island how, how far can you go i mean like you you better hope you have a boat if you keep spreading <laughs> so, right. so um but uh yeah so uh do you have any kind of funny stories learning any of the products you know um, um one of the products you know yeah i, I mean i do a lot of training so yeah. like it, it's kind of cool like one of my goals is to wake up every day to learn something new yep. you know no yep. matter how small it is yep. and you know, I don't know if this is a funny story, somewhat funny, I guess, but I'm doing a training session. This was just maybe five, six years ago mm-hmm. and we're joining poly lines together and I'm yep. doing the P edit multiple join. Yep. This young staff little person goes, you know, you can just type in the join command to do the same thing. I'm like, I've when you get there. used to doing things like the same way, yep. you know, a three, four step process over yep. the years. And then all of a sudden, like these new younger folks are like, oh, you can do it in one command. Yep. You know, it just shows you like, you know, don't don't get stuck in your ways and be open to uh, learning new things. You yep. never know. Exactly. I know what you mean. I've been there. Uh, somebody actually did that when I was doing teaching too. And like, yeah, just use the crunch, man. I'm like, oh, well, let me try it. <laughs> because there's so many different ways. I mean, Autodesk, uh, Civil 3 allows you to do things three or four different ways, you know, how to do something, a task. Oh, but uh, uh, another one was, you know, when somebody introduced me a long time ago to the right click with object snaps, you know, so, you know, shift yeah. right click. I'm like, shift what? Right <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a that's a beneficial one. Yeah, like you said, there's, there's 10 different ways to do everything in AutoCAD and Civil 3D, yeah. you know, it's like, you know, everybody kind of has their own like path they go on. And, you know, as long as it's uh, effective, yep. I, don't, I don't care what, which way you do it, you know. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Usually when I teach, um, I'll teach them all as many different ways I can that I know of and let them decide which one's the most efficient way for them. So if like, hey, if I'm going to create alignment or, you know, or select a feature, say, hey, you could be the command or you can do the pull down or you can do the ribbon or you go to tool space or you can do the right click. And I just let them decide, say, hey, this is what I do, but I'll let you decide which way you feel comfortable doing it, you know. Because some yeah. people are command people. They just, man, they're they're quick at it. They remember it, you know. So, and I try, yeah. I don't try to change them. I say, hey, here's where the button is on the ribbon. Here's where the pull down is. Here's how you do it with a right click. And here it is in the tool space, you know. And and then um, you decide. And here's the command. You know, you decide which way you feel comfortable. <laughs> yeah, and and some of those are slightly different too. Like you know, yep. in the like Civil 3D in the points pull down menu, there's a couple different options that's yep. not not in the ribbon. Yeah. And then there, there are some commands you can only get to by typing it in at the command line. So, yeah. you know, we're, I guess, what do you find yourself um, using the most, the menu, ribbon, or command line? I am a mixture of all three, actually. It depends which task is doing. Um, what I'm doing, maybe, uh, I think probably dealing with maybe surfaces sometimes. Uh, I'm editing, I'm, it's all ribbon, but if I'm trying to select other menu, I do the pull down menu, um, yeah. um, or some people will go to tool space to edit certain features like styles stuff. But sometimes I'll just go in the right click option and go right straight to style editor and stuff. So I'm more of a mixture of all three. You know, I'm pretty yeah. even in all three of them. Um, I would say yeah, I would commands say is my last ones, other yeah. than the really basic AutoCAD command, you know, everybody does the copy paste and offset and stuff like that. But if you're trying to run other, you know, actual smart data commands, I'd really kind of shy away from the, those long ones. So you're dealing with corridor commands and stuff. I don't, oh, yeah. um, but, sure. uh, and, and some people will go and modify their, their right click options and stuff. So, um, I, I typically try to keep it the same. That way, if I jump onto another laptop, it's just it's not confusing, you know. I've had some yeah. users where they customize everything. They change a lot of their uh, command aliases. They change a lot of their right click features, their ribbon, everything. And then one day their computer crashed, and then 
um, I think it was Windows issue, and we had to put him on a laptop. And we come back two hours later, he's still trying to figure out his his all his settings because he didn't outport uh, export all his user profiles and settings and workspace. Yeah. So he spent two hours, you know, trying to get everything back the way it was. You know, I said, guys, just make simple edits. Don't change the whole way it functions. You know. Yeah, I'm the same way because if you, if you have some glitch in AutoCAD or Civil 3D and you have to reset the AutoCAD profile, yep. you know, it starts from scratch out of the box. And yeah, so keep it simple. That's I, I agree with that for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so if you could share one tip, you know, I don't know if you have your computer in front of you, but if you can share one tip, I guess, in maybe Civil 3D, what would it be, you know, for, you know, attendees are going to watch this video? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll share a tip with yep. like, Let like, me, yeah. I think yeah. I told you that uh, my computer was wrapping out today. Yeah, let's so, see how uh, it's doing now. Um, yeah, how about I'll do it verbally? Just yeah, so yeah, that's get, fine. Yeah, so um, yeah, for those of you that are listening to this, I had a bunch of computer issues today, and I just got my computer back an hour <laughs> ago. So trying to recover from that, <laughs> I'm sure folks have been there before. So yeah. uh, one one tip, I guess it, it's kind of a hidden uh, command line only option is mm -hmm. the report surface volume command. Mm -hmm. You know, when you type that in, it brings up the uh, panorama window and you could calculate a volume calculation. Mm -hmm. And that prevents you from having to create volume surfaces in your drawing. Oh, okay. So, you know, when you create, if you use the volume dashboard or a volume surface, it mm -hmm. creates a volume surface, which duplicates both surfaces. Yep increases the file size, you know, kind of blows your yep. drawing, all that kind of stuff. So the report surface volume tool is definitely beneficial where it yep. doesn't not create the volume surfaces and still gives you the same numbers. So okay. Yeah, that's a good one. Good one. I'll definitely definitely check it out. I think I've used it once. I haven't I was sometimes I forget, you know, you can't remember all the right. cool commands and stuff. So uh um one thing I would share to you know, attendees here on the civil 3D um, is that yes, there is a contour smoothing feature uh, for surfaces, uh, but don't do it for the whole giant project. You know, don't go and apply a two foot, two by two, by two grid contour smoothing. Um, I've had users do that where they did it on a big project and they put a two by two contour smoothing. Next you know is quadruple the size. This, this drawing was quadrupled. And so uh, just do it where you need it. That would be my um, tip for people using the contour smoothing feature on for surfaces. So uh, I don't know if you've ever used it. Uh, I've, I only use it once in a while, um, you know, Blue Moon, but uh, yeah, yeah, it, it definitely it definitely slows down your your surface rebuild time. Yeah, um, so, you know, if I am going to use it, I wait till the end to apply that. Yeah, and the other, um, I'm sure you've seen this before too. But if you have a flat pad or like a finished floor that's at a perfect even elevation, the contours will kind of create like a, a zebra pattern yep. through there. So you have to raise your finished floor like 0.01 or 0.001 just to mm -hmm. prevent that from happening. Yeah, yeah. And, and then sometimes I'll tell people like, look, you don't have to create a feature line for flat objects. If you know it's flat, use a polyline. You don't have to turn it into a feature line. That's some of my advice to some people is like, if you know it's gonna be flat, it's always gonna remain flat. I don't think it's necessary to use it as a feature line. Use just a regular polyline, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, so, sure. uh, but uh, yeah, yeah. Um, what's the next question here? So, where do you think um, Civil 3D will be in the next five, 10 years? And where would you hope it would be? I know we've seen some things from Autodesk, we probably can't talk about it, but you know, where would you hope it would be in 10, five, 10 years? You know, yeah. So, I mean, the, the rumors on the street is, uh, you know, the long, Long time rumors have been, you know, Infoworks is potentially going to replace Civil 3D long term, you know, and you're 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 starting to see little things in Infoworks that that could potentially have that happen, but I think that's a long way off if that's going to yeah. ever happen. Um, you know, the we're we're going to roll out 2022 here in the mm -hmm. next couple months, and the new grading optimization tool that comes with 2022 looks yeah. awesome. Can't wait to dive into that and, and see how that can uh, change our workflows for the better. Yeah. Um, but I think uh, Infoworks has a lot of promise. Um, there's still a lot yeah. of things that need uh, addressed, but you know it's a great product for what it is. It's it's a very user friendly product. I like to say 
it doesn't take you as long to learn Infoworks compared to Civil 3D. Right. You know? right. But yes, it doesn't do everything that Civil 3D does. You know, Civil 3D is seven software sitting on top of each other, you know. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, we, I would we, love it to be one product where I can just change the workspaces, you know, and that's why I was telling the other expert at least like, man, it'd be really great if I could just flip flop, you know, between Infoworks, Recap, um, even Navisworks, all one product. And Revit can still be its own separate thing, you know. Uh, but even maybe having a, a light version of Revit, you know, I can change yeah. it to Revit Lite and it's a few editing tools or viewers on Civil 3D. That would be pretty nice. Um, so, yeah, uh, probably easier said than done because every one of those softwares is built on different architectures. Yeah, I know. That's, that's, that's the thing. They would have to totally re amp everything. So, that would uh, be great, though. Oh, it'd man. Awesome. It'd, be, it'd be really, really nice. And, uh, um, but, uh, what other questions you have? So, um, so on training, you know, uh, what do you think is the hardest thing, you know, for somebody like a CAD manager or technology manager when you get into training? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. um, I think my biggest challenge, I've been doing training for long time now i used to work for an autodesk reseller mm. back in 2007 and yeah eight, so i've been doing it ever since then um i guess w one of my biggest challenges is uh trying to get like-minded people or people with the same skill set in the training session because mm -hmm. it never fails like i'll do a training session with six people and you got a one guy that's really advanced one person that's super brand new and everybody else in the middle in that whole training session is kind of tailored to the weakest link. Yep. Um, yep. yep. So having some sort of system in place to, to kind of get those like-minded individuals together. Yeah. Would be the best thing, but it yep. doesn't always work that way. No, I, yeah, exactly. I've, I've been there, you know, um, and, and some people don't realize that everyone learns in a different way. So some people are more one-on-one, -on -one. you know, they feel comfortable. They, they learn better one-on-one. -on -one. Some people need handouts and books. They love, reading step-by-step -step directions and handouts and stuff. Some people are visual. They can watch a video and boom, they're done. You know, like, hey, I got it. I understand it now. Um, I don't really have any questions. I'm more of a visual person. I watch a video, then that's pretty much it, you know? <laughs> and, um, yeah. But if I try to pick up like that Master in Civil 3D book that was that big, after the first page, I'm already bored <laughs> you know, reading it. Yeah, so, yeah that's, that's how I am, you know, kind of self-taught, you know, you yep. kind of do do your own research and yep. just kind of learn. And, you know, when I first started my career, like my, my wife would get upset with me because I'd spend three, three plus hours every evening on my own, just learning new software and technology and just yep. try, I, I just, just the sponge, you know, just yep. kind of help set myself apart. That's exactly what I did for so many years, 15, 15, 20 plus years where when Civil 3D came out, I would go home to install the 30 day trial and just play with it at night. You know, every other night, spend like an hour or two and just seeing what this button does. And then during lunch, that's what I did. Just sit there, yeah. play with it, read people's blogs and stuff, you know, uh, go to Augie website, go to the forums, read, you know, so uh, back when there was Civil 4D and, and other ones, you know, that were, were around. And then once I became more of a power user, I started sharing my knowledge to the, to the to my own uh, blog website, you know. Um, but no, I, I love learning new things. You know, that's I only took one class um, and the rest was just self-taught, just learning through things. I, I went to a lot of user groups back in the late 2000s. There were a lot of user groups. You know, a lot of the resellers had, the, you know, their own user group. So I'd go to all these different resellers and go to all these different user groups. They were free. But then, you know, I, you know, they cut them all out. All the user groups disappeared. That's why I started my own user group to keep sharing and networking with other engineers and designers and architects and stuff like that. You know, so uh, I wanted to kind of bring that back because there was like three or four in Dallas at one time. Now it's just one. It's just one, I think. I don't know. If, yeah. There might be another Revit one. My buddy has a Revit one. I'll take that back. But yeah, they kind of disappeared. And I understand, you know, it, it's hard to keep up, you know, when you're sharing free knowledge and you're a reseller and, you know, you're selling training, but you're also giving away free training when you're doing all these, a lot of these uh, user group events, you know, so, uh, you know, you don't want to give away all your best stuff, you know, <laughs> so, um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, was there a lot of user groups where, where you're located at? Yeah, I actually uh, started the Pittsburgh Civil 3D user group back oh. in 2008, yeah. uh, so I'm the current president of that group. We've kind of been in a little hiatus right yeah. now, I mean, because of COVID and 
little little break before that um, just kind of wore me out a little bit because you know I was the one presenting every month and I, I was trying to get it's a job know, the 20 or 30 attendees that would attend yep. and step up and share and yep. you know and I, I don't mind sharing knowledge I mean I, I want to share everything yeah. you know to help make people better but it was like Come on, guys, get back a little bit too. So I'm yeah, we're talking about getting it uh kicked back up again um after COVID's done. Yeah, but, uh, yeah it was it was great. Um and we had support from all the resellers here in Pittsburgh. Yeah, even national resellers. I mean, Autodesk was great. Um, yep. you know, they would send in guest speakers for us. Mm -hmm. So definitely uh you know, a cool thing to, to be a part of for sure. Yeah, yeah. I uh I think I started my user group in 20. 16 and i decided to do more of a training events besides like networking events so i hosted my first training event it was by myself so that was a complete total new job for me because i was out there doing the marketing you know negotiating with instructors and the costs and going getting scheduling for the 30 speakers that came to my event so um i invited everybody every reseller I invited every single reseller and, you know, negotiating everything. Um, and uh, Autodesk showed up. They they sent a couple of people too. And it was a big, we had it at the big convention center at Urban Convention Center in Dallas. Um, so I got a, I got the top floor. So I got, you know, lucky they gave me the top floor, the, their main prime real estate. Uh, and when it could turn out, I think we had maybe 80 people showed up. You know, there was more than a hundred something registered, but only 80 was able to show up because of work-related items and stuff. But uh it was a job because I actually emailed every engineering company. I probably sent private messages on LinkedIn to probably 500 people. Um, and then you're sitting there negotiating all these, you know, costs for speakers to come in. You know, they, some of them, most of them didn't want to come in for free. So I had to end up paying them. So on the very first one, I lost $3,000. I had to pay, I ate $3,000 out of my own pocket <laughs> uh, because of the event cost so much uh, at the convention center. Um, the food is a bit expensive. You know, that's my tip to all the user group presidents. They're like, oh, don't ever do it at convention center because you can't outsource the food. You have to use their catering and then they want to charge, you know, $25, $30 for a sandwich and chips and drink. <laughs> so yeah. uh, that's where the, the, they make the money. The room wasn't that expensive. You know, uh, projectors was costly. It cost me $300 per projector. And I had six rooms going on at the same time <laughs> all wow. day long. And then they charged me for electrical too, like some electrical charge for $100 per room. It just kept adding up. And then $60 <laughs> I mean, for two gallons of coffee, you know, and the coffee went pretty quick uh four dollars per coke can <laughs> dang i mean this is it was pretty new the building's pretty new it was only around for like uh it was it's been open for like two years you know so the convention center was pretty new and but yeah it's yeah i lost three thousand dollars that first user group you yeah know. get uh, some of the resellers to sponsor that thing you know I'd no like they were sponsors gold, yeah, they were some sponsors level. and stuff but yeah it just wasn't enough to cover the cost for everything and i learned from each one of those user group events and stuff so that's why i've been really heavily involved with the uh community dojo and other programs for autodesk uh, yeah. and giving my advice and pointers to other user group members that are trying to start theirs uh, what software did I use to maintain all the online classes? So there was a software I used to show that they can log in and register for different classes online. It's kind of similar to AU uh, software. Um, and talk about, you know, sponsorships, how to do it. So, and I was lucky enough, Autodesk came to each one of my events. I hosted another one at the Ur uh, Arlington Convention Center. Then I had another one at the Nilo Hotel. I did have another one registered at UTA. Uh, I was going to be the very first person to host an event at their campus, hmm. uh, but scheduling conflicts and it ended up being the only time it was opening was spring break. And really, we didn't have enough registration to really make it worth everybody's while. So I ended up canceling it. Um, you know, a lot of students wanted it to happen. Then the only time I could do it was spring break. And then most of them didn't bother registering <laughs> during spring break, even though they requested it. So I tried to make it happen. <laughs> So, uh, but, um, yeah, yeah. Um, um, what other, are you a part of any kind of Autodesk special programs, you, you know, you're, you're involved in? Um, the expert elite program, mm -hmm. um, also, uh, the civil 3d and imports, uh, beta mm -hmm. sandbox, you know, yeah. um, uh, yeah, I think that's it. Okay, cool. Cool. Uh, yeah. Have you have you put your I guess you, since you are president of a, a user group have you put your uh, group on the the new Autodesk group network 
I have. Yeah, cool. yeah, we are on there for sure. Cool. Yep. Cool. Yeah, last uh, time I checked, there was like 120 some groups, if I remember correctly. Yeah, now it's it's slowly growing. Yeah, that's it's 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 starting to come back. I think we have like maybe eight in Texas now, so uh, it's it's slowly growing. So, but definitely, definitely. Um, hobbies. What's your hobbies? Um. Well, I, I work a lot just yeah. to keep up with everything. Uh, like like traveling, you know, hanging out with family. Yeah. Uh, coach baseball. Well, um, my son grew up. Um, cool. Play baseball back in yeah. when I was younger, all throughout high school. Uh, you know, just so I'd say baseball and computers, technology, and uh, you know, just hanging out with family. Yeah, that's kind of like me. I, I like to, you know, when I was dating, <laughs> since I worked so much, you know, they would, you know, girlfriend would get on to me because I was staying late at night playing around with software and you know, ever coming to bed, you know, and I'm like trying to learn something new real quick. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. yeah, that would get me in trouble a lot. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, technology is, is a big thing. I like, I mean, I'm looking, you know, looking into any kind of technology, you know, from smartphones to tablets, the cameras, even design software. Sometimes I'll look at some of the Bentley products, you know, um, uh, I, I'm kind of getting into some of the 3D modeling software like Twin Motions and um, uh, what's the other one? Uh, Lumion. Yeah. Um, I've dabbled a little bit with the, um, what is the other one? There's a small one that's like 500 bucks. Um, uh, Inkscape. That's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. That's yeah. a pretty cool little, I mean, that's pretty cool for the, the price. I mean, it's it's impressive. Um, yeah. I know a lot of architects use Inkscape. Um, yeah. um, what about like Unity or Unreal? I haven't played with Unity and Unreal um, at all. Um, I need to try to find some time playing with it. Um, what's some other ones uh, I've played with? SketchUp. I play with SketchUp, you know, um, yeah. because it, it can you can link it to other you know 3D modeling software. You can link the SketchUp to Twin Motions and, and Lumion and even Inkscape. You can link them all together. So um, I've dabbled a little bit. I'm starting to dabble a little bit with Revit. Um, yeah. it, it is hard to make time and as you know, to keep up with all these different software is really hard to keep up, you know, as a cat, yeah. I mean, Civil 3D, AutoCAD, you know, uh, vehicle tracking, SSA, um, InfoWorks, you know, Recap, Namusworks. It's hard to keep up with all those software, you know, yeah, what's sure been changed, what's updating. You know, some people are lucky where, oh, it's just Revit. You know, like, okay, there's a couple of add-ins, but that's like still one product. <laughs> Yeah, you know, with a bunch that of it seems like that seems like every quarter Autodesk is acquiring a new company. Then it's like it's exactly well, what does this do now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, with the new H and H software they just purchased, and I just there's another one that just purchased uh, about to purchase this month. Um, it's a smaller company, you know, not like the billion dollar H and H software, you know, they're right. doing. So uh, um, I am kind of curious if that's going to you know um, replace. SSA. I don't know. I'm kind of, kind of curious if that will or not. I mean, yeah, two or three years down the road before they kind of incorporated it, probably. So, yeah, SSA has been kind of uh, stagnant for a little while, so yeah. definitely needs needs an overhaul, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I think a lot of the engineers are so accustomed to using their own spreadsheets. You know, um, yeah. every engineer I know, I have my own hydraulic spreadsheets and for uh, the tension ponds and. Uh, sometimes I'll use some of the Hydroflow Express for simple calculations for pipe sizings and stuff, um, or a ditch or, or culvert. Um, but when you get into storm, I, I got my own spreadsheet. And everybody, I, I think every engineer has their own spreadsheet, you know. And no software is perfect. There's always going to be a limitation and flaws in the software. You know, for us in Texas, um, what I've seen in SSA is that is the we we have Y connections and horizontal and vertical bins, and SSA doesn't really recognize the null structures. You know, you know, you have to go in there and manipulate it, think, hey, what is going to be the uh, hydraulic uh, jump at those? Because it thinks it's going to be a manhole. It's not. It's not a manhole. So, and that's the problem with the software there is that, and and in the East Coast and West Coast, what I've understand is there is no such thing as Y connections and and horizontal bins and vertical bins. They just put a manhole there, you know, and that makes it simple. But it, you know, the construction cost is dribbled, doubled, and tripled, you know, because you put a manhole there. There goes five thousand dollars for that manhole, you know. So, um, so yeah. um, one one new software that I'm looking at now. It's called Virtual Surveyor. Mm -hmm. um, looks pretty promising we just started looking at it maybe two weeks ago but yeah. it allows you to take your drone data or laser scan data mm -hmm. and do a virtual survey on the point file 
Oh, wow. um, so just like you would in the field, you take your shots and yeah. set your field code, and then you bring it back to Civil 3D Field to finish to yeah. process your survey data. You could do the same thing, but you're sitting in front of your computer doing it. Um, oh, cool! So it looks wow pretty awesome, and it's pretty inexpensive compared to all the other softwares that we uh, spend money. What is it on. called? I'm Virtual gonna... Surveyor. Virtual Surveyor. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna write it down. Survey. I'm going to check it out. Yeah, thanks. Sure. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think that's all the questions I have. Um, are, are you part of any kind of organizations, any other kind of committees and organizations, not, not Autodesk related or anything, but you know, I know some um, people are involved with their committee with other things, you know, um, but uh, uh, I mean, I, I have done some civil 3D classes at the University of Pittsburgh. Oh, um, so cool. I'm hoping to uh, get back into that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, not uh, not that, any other organizations. Primarily just Autodesk stuff, you know. Autodesk stuff, yeah. And, and you said you have two kids or one kid? I do. Yeah, two, two kids. kids. Yeah. So yeah, that'll keep you tied up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Thankfully, they're uh, getting a little older now, so yeah. it's okay because I, I do travel often. I yeah. Mean, it seems like every week I'm on the road. So. Oh man, that's that's gonna be tough. That's gonna be tough. Yeah. Lucky for me, my daughter's 19 now, so she's she's okay. off on her own now. <laughs> so doing her thing, you know, but uh, uh, I know exactly what it's like when she was living with me as a single dad. Yeah, that was really busy. <laughs> oh, yeah. So during the summers. So, um, but all right. Well, that's all the questions I had. I really had a good time. I hope you enjoyed it. You know, um, yeah, definitely. If you have a, do you have a, uh, any kind of social media handle? Anybody wants to, you know, if they want to follow you? Yeah, you could look me up on LinkedIn, just Rob Sinclair or Twitter, uh, PGH Civil 3D, is my Twitter handle. and. Okay. Try to share tips and tricks on both of those platforms. So feel free to follow me on either one of those. Yeah. Um, are you submitting any classes for AU this year? I'm not planning on it. Yeah. Um, being that it's virtual, it, yeah. uh, I mean, it kind of takes a lot away from the conference. Yeah. I, I definitely prefer the in-person conference. Yeah. You know, all the networking and everything. Yeah. Um, you know, so I'll probably just kind of tune into some classes uh, behind mm -hmm. the scenes while I'm working. And hopefully we get to see each other in person uh, next yeah. year. Yeah, exactly. Well, thanks for joining us. Um, I appreciate you coming in, you know, spend a few minutes with us and uh, I will see you around. Thank you, everyone. All right. Thank you for having thanks. me, Tony. Thanks. Take care. Bye.